Everybody stay until one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> We're burning the midnight oil tonight. Oh, take up your coffee. <laughs> <laughs> we got uh, we, well we, as long as we got alan and jake we got some <coughs> some miles ahead of us and jeremy <laughs> the night stretches long <laughs> <laughs> yeah how's it going jeff okay it is um just okay it's always okay oh hey <clears throat> That kind of reminds me. I'll, I'll read something um, uh, that I, 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 you know, in the evening, sometimes I'm sitting here at the gateway and there's nothing happening and I'll just type something out. <clears throat> and this is something I wrote, a, just a little episode um, with Kitty. If I can find it. Here it is. Wait. Yikes, you guys go ahead. I, I got to locate this. Talk amongst yourselves. Let's see. <laughs> I'll pour some drinks. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Um, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Daddy, you have to sing Leela Leela again. Since the, since the time you've shared that song with us, <laughs> so I've been listening to it every single day. <laughs> I love it. I'm afraid people get tired of it. <laughs> <laughs> Prakash was saying, uh, you should sing it. And I'm like, no, only Betty can sing that song. <laughs> Our Huey magician taught, from, taught it to us. Uh, you want me to sing it now? I yeah, could. Sure. Can't, Jeff can't find his. Uh, yeah, I, I did find it, but I, um, oh, I'll good. go after Betty. <clears throat> <laughs> sure. OK. <laughs> All right. The eyes of the baby look at everything from under. The eyes of the young man behold his lady's face with wonder. The eyes of the old man look upon the flowing river. What of those whose eyes are one day leave this world forever? Leela, Leela, this life is just a game. Winners lose and losers win and the game is still the same. Leela, Leela, this world is just a play. Those who say don't know and those who know don't say. Where is the man who in his heart can really feel it? Can he feel it in himself and then can he reveal it? So let us sing to God and clean our hearts of strangers. When mind is gone, the heart is strong and love remains forever. Leela, Leela, this life is just a game. Winners lose and losers win, and the game is still the same. Leela, Leela, this world is just a play. Those who say don't know, and those who know don't say. How can a man accept life who does not accept the dying? How can he achieve his purpose without even trying? How can a man have courage who cannot as well be tender? He who wins the game is he who's learning to surrender. Leela, Leela, this life is just a game. Winners lose and losers win. The game is still the same. Leela, Leela, this life is just a play. Those who say don't know and those who know don't say. Mayher is the man who in his heart can really feel it. He feels it all within himself and then for us revealed it. So let us sing aloud and let our hearts be gladder. Sing to God until the masquerade no longer matters. 
Leela, Leela, this life is just a play. Those who say don't know and those who know don't say. Leela, Leela, this life is just a game. Winners lose and losers win and the game is still the same. Winners lose and losers win and the game is still the same. Jay Baba. Hey Baba. <laughs> Thank you very much. You sing it with such ease. I I I I keep stumbling. <laughs> Jay Baba. Thank you, Betty. Yeah. <clears throat> uh oh. Shoot. <laughs> Did you lose it? <laughs> I, I can hear you guys. I'll I'll read I'll see if I can read this. Yikes. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. I can't uh -huh. see any of you, but I'll read uh, this is what I wrote about Kitty. <clears throat> uh, Kitty Davy was a truly selfless person, so focused on the happiness and spiritual well being of others, and a delight to be with. During the early 1970s, I found that when I would go in to see her in her office, within 45 seconds, we would be talking about me and my life with Baba and any problems I might have. I would be astounded at how this would happen each time. At one point, I was determined to remedy this. I thought to myself, I'm going to ask how Kitty is doing, uh, ask her about her life with Baba, anything to keep the focus on her in the conversation. So with this plan in mind, I entered her office and began inquiring how she was doing as well as angling for a Baba story from her. <clears throat> Somehow, without my even realizing it, <clears throat> we wound up talking about me. And the, the Baba story she shared was one that related to me. <clears throat> How did this come about? I tried several other times to focus on her as deeply as I could, and the same thing would happen. Finally, I realized I could feel it energetically. Her focus on me, was so much more powerful than my focus on her. It was like I was trying to swim upstream against a powerful current, and I would be thrown up on the shore somehow needing attention. It was clear to me that with Baba, his loving focus favors the weakest link, and that was me. Kitty was truly looking away from herself. She was so naturally selfless in her response. And of course, she knew Baba had her in his pocket eternally. So in herself, she was perfectly fine. I don't know if you could hear that, but. No, we heard, it's a beautiful story. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That was key. <laughs> so this, this is you musing about, is this your voice? Yeah, I yeah, yeah, I was just <clears throat> wrote up. Oh, uh, an experience I had with her over a period of a week back in the 70s. Yeah. Do you have, do you have more of those writings uh, on hand or on your computer somewhere? I do. <clears throat> oh, well, you want to hear another one? Well, yes. I do. Sure. Okay, let's see if I, while well, you guys go and, um, you know, say Baba's name in the corner or something like that. I'll see if I can find something else. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so how's everybody doing? Good. How are Good. you? I can't hear it. I can't hear it. Maybe I should turn on original sound. How's everybody doing tonight? The pet sounds good. good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Got to say Here, Baba. Good. Jay Baba. Jay Baba, rock on. Rock on. Mary Baba Scott. <laughs> All right. You should tell a story about Rainy in, in Australia every time we go on a roundabout. What did she say again? Do you want me to tell it? Yeah. There, when we were in Australia, you do you all know who Rainy Eastman Gannett is? Yeah. yeah. So she um, she's so expressive. And she would rent rents a car every time she goes to Australia. She goes, I guess, like every year or so. 
and every time they have all these roundabouts in australia it's part of like a just lot how their roads are built especially like kind of in the country-ish areas but like there's just everywhere roundabout roundabout but it's kind of freaky because like there's no sign it it's just you're like entering into it's like double dutch kind of and so <laughs> she she like every time she would drive us around and every time she'd drive us she'd go into the <laughs> she'd go into the roundabout she'd go man mama's gone man mama's gone <laughs> what, happened, what happened to the thing with where, where she, we almost she like, stopped the brakes really hard? What did she say then? No, <laughs> uh, it was something else. Yeah, was there, was, there was a moment where there was a moment where she was like talking about how crazy people drive in the, that country, <laughs> and and then she basically was not paying attention to the road. And she was looking back at us in the rearview mirror and talking to us. And I don't know how she said it, but she said it in all one phrase. Like she hit the brakes really hard. And she said, Beloved Avatar may her oh, yeah, yeah. No, she goes, Bola, beloved Avatar may her Like all, all, all at once. <laughs> Love it, I'm talking about it. She like, goes, Whoa, 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 we talked about Rainy Eastman. Yeah. I saw her the other day on Zoom. Oh, good. Oh, nice. Yeah. Briefly, very yeah. briefly, she was swear wishing. Yeah, like is it Archie uh, or something? Uh, Jim Meyer's concert. Oh, okay. yeah. sure. Yeah, we should have her yeah, do she was there. I wonder Marcia if. Marsha has something to say. Go ahead. Marcia. Yeah, talk about. I just moved and I'm all settled. And I live, there's a lake and it's got the same thing, the roundabouts. And so, like, I just went for a little trip, and I forgot my phone. And I was driving around and around, right? and I was saying, "Oh boy, it's so Bob is doing his work. He's sending me everywhere." Right? It's really funny. Yeah. So anyway, where did you, you go to, Marcia? Where do you live? I'm in Vernon Hills near the um, uh, Hawthorne Shopping Center. So it's like I didn't realize that there's woods everywhere, and it's like so beautiful. There's a lake. We've got ducks and coyotes and. But it's like kind of like um, Mayberry USA, but modern. <laughs> I, I, right now, I just I'm isolating myself and you know unpacking. But it's like it's very lovely. It's like I think Bob is putting us all over the all over the world, right, in different spots. It's like so nice. I I even have a wall, electric sockets on every wall. <laughs> so I'm throwing away all these electrical cords and things. It's like funny. Yeah. Yeah, I loved your song you just sang. It was beautiful. Was it Betty that sang that? Yeah. 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 What? What's the Lila, are you near the Lila song? Some whoever sang the Lila song. It was lovely. Yeah. The song Betty, Betty sang it. Betty. Betty. Yeah. Anyway, I'm still not grounded, so I'll be blabbing. <laughs> it's like okay, I just want this place is so great. It's like oh my god, it's like no problem, safe distancing. There's nobody in back, and just like woods and everything. It's like oh, it's like what oh, like full cycle from where I was, you know, in the city. It's like, oh, too good to be true. <laughs> but is it, is it near the center? Is it South Carolina or another state? Illinois, near Chicago. Oh, Illinois. I moved, oh. I was in Chicago my whole oh, life. Except, oh, that, oh, and I lived like, in the same apartment for 30 years. Remember I said I was moving? Well, I did it. <laughs> uh, you and Trish Alexander moved out yeah. of Chicago to the country, huh? Well, yeah, I always wanted to live in the country, and now it's like um, 30 years, the last 30 years in the same uh, place, and now I'm in a new place, so I'm happy. Congratulations. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was a big thank you. It was, it was uh, worth all the work and all the bumps and broken back and everything. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now, pretty soon I can get back to doing art, so someday I'll share. I've been, like, writing every night and stuff, and I do a, a lot of stuff on my iPad, and I've I've got a lot of, I went to India three times, so I have lots of photos from 1994, which was my first trip, and I met Mani and everybody, and I was there, there for Silence Day, and she pulled me out of the um, the line, you know, and took me with to put flowers in all Baba's special places, 
and then I what I forgot the name of that little place that's next to the um to the samadhi that has a little room well I like stood there and watched let, had people go in you know it was kind of so I was like on fire you know, I saw Baba everywhere but yeah. until then until really now I'm fully I'm fully convinced that definitely he's the avatar of the age there's no doubt <laughs> <laughs> lots of bumps and bruises and kicks and kisses but uh oh my god so it makes me happy <laughs> anyway if you ever well, I haven't figured out how to share stuff I'm like right now on my on my cell phone but I've got everything on my iPad like and I um you know, I'll send pictures if anybody wants me to send them anything, just let me know. Sometimes I put stuff out, you know, but I don't know how to get it everywhere. But anyway, that's enough. I'll be quiet. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Uh, no, I, I hope this is I hope this doesn't go all over the world. I guess it goes all over the world, but I guess that's pretty great, right? They'll say, What's that crazy girl? Yeah, it you know? it yeah. goes to the White House. The White um, House. Yeah, to Trump, right? <laughs> yeah, we'll he edit. could use some he could use some Bible love, right? <laughs> it's being recorded. Yeah. Well, I know, probably. Uh, so he, here's one thing, but I think some of you have heard this before. I wrote, but I wrote it up. <clears throat> um, I found around the. Uh, uh, I found that I absorbed in a very natural way many profound truths in being with the Mandali. Here is one example. One deep insight came in a way that on the surface wouldn't be obvious at all. And this happened one day at Merizad with Baba's beloved Mera. It was back in the early 1970s when I was young and immature in Baba. Mera was standing on the porch of the main house saying goodbye to a young woman whose pilgrimage had come to an end. She was on her way back to the West. I was there just to say goodbye for the day before going back to Meribah. Mera lovingly encouraged the young woman to take Baba with her, not to worry that Baba would take care of her. And at one point she surprised me saying, "Some this is Mera saying, sometimes we feel empty and depressed, but we know Baba wants us to be cheerful. So we make efforts to be cheerful. This made a profound impression on me. I thought to myself, she is the beloved of the beloved. And for decades, she has been next to the source of all love. And yet she doesn't always experience a joyous heart full of Baba's love. I concluded, then love must be something different from what I had thought. Up to that point, I took the feeling of Baba's love in my heart as the sign that I was on the right track. Baba was with me. And when I would lose that feeling, I would agonize over what I must have done wrong. I had struggled to get the feeling back, desperately. But after this small exchange with Mara, I rever rarely ever worried again about how I was feeling. I never felt bad if I experienced emptiness or sunk into a low mood. I was able to see after that, that love was on a different track. It came from a different dimension within me. I would notice, for example, in times when I felt depressed or sad, my mood never prevented me from responding to a situation with love. Love was not dependent upon my mood or the state of my feelings, nor did, I take, nor did they take away from my love. Love was independent. And after that, I didn't take it personally when I wasn't experiencing Baba's love in my heart. I would leave that up to his timing, and, and I would be deeply grateful when it happened. Baba once said, feelings and emotions are the creation of energy and mind. Love is the creation of the soul. Feelings and emotions are the creation of energy and mind, love is the creation of the soul. Over time, I, I came to experience my consciousness, to use a metaphor, as the Earth's atmosphere. And moods and emotional states are like weather systems passing through it. If I identified with a raging storm in the atmosphere, I would be buffeted around by winds. But if I didn't identify with a storm, it would pass through me much more quickly. 
and I would not be pulled in. Years later, I began to see moods and emotional states like the seasons. It is not possible to stay in the springtime of moods like many spiritual groups advocate. Spring has to give way to summer where things heat up and a listlessness sets in. Then autumn comes and the natural world begins to shut, world begins to shut down. The temperatures cool in a way that's invigorating. But that doesn't last. Winter comes and everything dies back. There can be a feeling of emptiness and nature appears lifeless. These natural cycles are like the feelings and emotions moving naturally through us. And yet all the time, Baba's love is behind the cycle of these emotional seasons, untouched, independent, ever accessible to us. Like Mara's expansive, gentle, ever embracing love, which she radiated so beautifully, even though she herself might be feeling sad and weary. How amazing that because of such a seemingly minor incident, with only a few words spoken, such a profound truth about moods and feelings was communicated, which has made such a difference in my life. But I know well that Baba's close mandali are completely linked to the divine, and so many deep truths naturally flowed from them, whether they were aware of it or not. Later, I read where Baba had said to Arnavas Dadachanji, who was complaining to him that she wasn't feeling him. And Baba said, I never said to feel me, I said to love me. So true. I don't know if you, did you folks hear that? Or yeah. was you? That was um, beautiful, Jeff. Yeah. Hey, Jeff, uh, you have an electronic copy of that? Yeah, if I can, uh, uh, what, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll, put my, I'll put my email here. Yeah. Okay. Jeff, I'll, I'll, if you do that, then you're going to need to send it to me too. But I think <laughs> you're starting the path of a uh, book that's going to be coming out soon. <laughs> By Jeff Wolverton. Yeah, yes. But These are gems from your experiences, I'll, Jeff. Yeah. Well, like I say, a lot of beautiful things happened around, um, you know, uh, around for me around the Mondale. I kept my radar going. So I got, uh, okay, I, I got uh, Prakash. Betty. Yeah. Oh, okay. Baba Lemons, huh? <laughs> Baba Lemons. At Gmail. Jeff, that was a great, great writing story experience. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, good. I liked it. Yeah. 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 No, still, a lot of beautiful. Still working stories. on that one, Jeff. What's that? Yeah. No, it's hard to let. It's hard to think that love is really on a different track altogether. It doesn't really have anything to do with feelings and emotions and thoughts in the sense that they're, they're different, but feelings and emotions and thoughts can, love can be expressed through them. They're like vehicles. But people think, well, if I don't feel love, how can I do a loving thing? Well, it's definitely possible not to be feeling, consciously feeling any love, and yet sacrifice your life for somebody. That's a beauty, Jeff. I mean, uh, the tendency generally has been to restrict love to a feeling of emotion of some kind. Yeah. And uh, your message, I mean, what you said just now, takes it beyond that, which is so, I mean, it's unbelievable. That's great. Yeah. Let me just see here. I was going to get... Um, <clears throat> huh. I, I had, um, anyway, I'm, I'm missing somebody's, um, Sorry. Oh, oh, there it is. Oh, there. Oh, yikes. <clears throat> oh, wow. Anyway. Is, it, is huh? this another story? 
Uh, no, I was, uh, <clears throat> I'm writing down some of these email addresses. Oh. So I can. Uh, you know, you know, do you know how to copy and paste so you don't have to write them down? No. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm glad there are a lot of gmail.coms. That's handy. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for writing down all these email addresses. I didn't realize that was part of what uh, was required oh. for you. So sing. You know what's even easier is if you put your email address in the chat and oh. everyone else has to email you. Yeah. Hey, that would be good. Then Let me do that. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll do that. Brilliant. Cut out the middleman, aka. Use the SDK. I have a story connected to what you were talking about, uh -oh. Jeff. Let yeah, just a second. I, I misspelled this. Yeah, good. Uh, this. Uh, oh, golly. Man, okay. What if you get 200 people in this chat, Jeff? <laughs> <laughs> there are only, there are only uh, 20 or something like that. Okay. Wait, like Jeff, did you put your email address in the chat? Oh, yeah, I got to press that thing, don't I? Okay, now you got it. I like to have yeah. one. What's that? I don't, I don't this think is nice thing. I like to have an email from you. Yeah, look on the look on the chat. We don't see it, Jeff. I think here, what, what yeah. is it? what's your email address? Bob is Jeff at earthlink.net. I see it there at the oh, I bottom. I think at uh, earthlink. Sometimes they get sent to like in private. Oh, B -A -B -A -S -J -E -F -F at earthlink.net. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so anyone oh, who wants Jeff's story, you just send him an email. Yeah. So Nasty and Jim just just send that email address and let him have your email and then he'll send you back. He'll send it yeah. to everyone. Good. And okay. then do a blind do a blind copy so you don't send everybody's thing to every you know you type in the person and then you click, you know, add keep adding and you put blind copy. So you can do it all at once, you know. Yeah. Can't we just send it to Jeff at Myrtle Beach? No. no. Do it all in one. Give it to him all in one email account. Yeah, I'll, I'll try it. I'll, I'll do it. It'll be a, it'll be a delight. Okay, uh, Alan, you had something there. Oh, yeah. Um, well, when, when you're talking about this story, or not story, but you're talking about this experience with Mara and I was thinking back on my life and recently I had somebody come up in my mind who I have had a hard history with and that's my uh, stepdad's father and um, and I, he just sort of came to mind the other day when I was in the kitchen on a, on a break from work and um, you know he kind of came to thought you know my, my thoughts and it was sort of random because I just hadn't thought of him in years and uh, you know how you have those relationships with people where you just, some of those people you don't really want to think about. Well, he came to mind and I thought to myself, have I really forgiven this man or have I let go? And I, and I just, I was like, yeah, I, I think I have, I don't know. And, and then the thought sort of passed. And then I got a call from my mom later on that evening saying that um, he was going to be taken off life support because he was... Uh, you know, I guess in a vegetative state from... He can't swallow. He can't swallow anymore. And so he's uh, he has had, I think, dementia and a couple other things. But, um, yeah, they were they were just basically, he's going to be leaving. Or I, I don't know if he already has, but... Um, but that evening, I got that call from my mom, and I said, oh, wow. And then and then I thought back, and I remembered a, I remembered a, a experience I had with him where... Um, you know, I'm not going to go into it here, but uh, he he did something in his life that was to the whole family and to everybody that's pretty pretty uh, hard to forgive, and uh, and you know he spent a lot of time in prison, and um, <clears throat> and so he came to live with us when I was a teenager or kind of getting older, eighteen, nineteen, something like that, and. Uh, 
he was he was just one of those people that just just something about his his aura or just every time he walked in the room he just made my skin crawl and he, and he would say things to me that that were you know unkind or or biting or something and at the time i didn't know he had dementia or that he was developing that so you know i'm a young guy and and uh, and basically there was a time where he basically taunted me or he, he got under my my skin or under my head so so badly that basically i i physically charged at him and uh my mom and three other men held me back uh who were happened to be doing housework or they were repair guys plumbers or something and i was really strong at the time i was training uh you know and uh, and, and so it was it was bad uh but but they held me back and he he was like taunting me he kept taunting me and uh the next morning i uh, i woke up to my mom kind of coming into the room and for some reason she was just really frantic and she was like you have to you have to take him you have to take him to the hospital i i cannot do it i have to take care of your grandmother he's having a heart attack and i was like what you want me is there any, no one else there's no one else that can take him this freaking guy to the hospital and she was like do it now and my mom's really a very gentle soft-spoken person for the most part but this was she was very fierce and i said okay 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 just let me wake up god <laughs> and so so i had to um i had to basically i mean go walk into the room and uh i don't know how to say it man it's just like the the, the extent of of hatred and rage i felt was just was animalistic it was just like i just was so so enraged and um i walked in that room and i looked at him and he looked up at me and he was just laying there and he was so weakened and he was holding on to his heart with his hand and he looked up at me and i just remember that that i just suddenly saw like myself in his eyes and 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 this huge layer of like rage left but i was still still really annoyed at him and still really did not like him in that moment but i still but i wasn't at that level of like i'm gonna i freaking hate you uh you know i want to attack you but i was like okay man come on come on let's go he's like i, I can't get up I, I i'm i'm tired i i, I don't know and so i had to help him up and then i realized that i was very conscious of the way that everything smelt and everything felt and just that i wanted to grab onto his shoulder and be like come on let's go to the car like come on but i found that my body physically couldn't like all i could do was like was hold him like his arm i helped him up and it was like i just remembered the, the gentleness that i that i held his arm and and it just was it, it was something was affecting me the fact that my body was not doing this thing that like, just it was just very weird for me so I, I helped him in the car and then i took him to the hospital and i tried to talk to him a little bit but he was just like ah. and then when he got to the hospital bed they started wiring him up and all that and and um i don't know how to say it but other than that that uh basically you know baba just i didn't know baba's name at the time i didn't know mayor baba but i just knew that i just it was just felt like what i thought was at the time was was Christ it was like I, I i felt Christ enter into the room and and enter into my body i felt i felt completely like the whole room just filled with light and there was all these people there was everything that was happening and everything slowed down and there was no more thoughts of like anything really and I, and I saw him and he saw me and again we locked eyes and he put his hand on his heart and i and i walked up to him and i put my hand on his heart over his hand and as i was looking at his eyes he just started weeping like a young like a very small child he just was weeping and weeping and i just said it's okay and i just i don't know what it was i said it's okay you're forgiven
you're forgiven. It's okay. It's okay. Let it go. I don't. And I don't know why. Why I even said that or or what was going on, but I just felt there wasn't me anymore, and uh, and he was able to let go of. A, I mean, from what from what from what was happening, I was just like, he just kept thanking me and holding onto my hand and and trying to kiss my hand, and he just was so. No one had no one had given him that kind of attention before. You know, he spent. He spent about 30 years in prison. Ooh. So uh, he hadn't been really touched. It's like he's just been isolated. And uh, yeah, the, so so yeah, I, I, left the, I left the room and then I just, it was like, I left, when I walked out of the room though, it was like, it was like a, a, a blanket came, like left, like this warm, fuzzy blanket left me and I was like just back to my kind of more back to my <laughs> back to my teenage self where I was like this freaking guy makes me wake up in the morning it's like take just like this and like walk it like just grumpy and and I never thought about it again I never thought I never really gave it any thought I never really shared that story until now so thanks thanks guys for yeah and and, <clears throat> and there were love love uh, you know how you were feeling your emotions and everything <clears throat> you know, uh, if you'd if you'd given in to them, I mean, love just came from the other dimension, <clears throat> and got you overrode how you were feeling and how you were thinking. I mean, that's yeah, it was impossible. There was no way. Yeah, from where for where my young testosterone mind was, I was just not, I was not well. <laughs> so, <laughs> if I, it was just really, it was it was Baba yep. just kind of coming coming and yeah yeah Lo love uh yeah love w will eclipse us if uh we're kind of loose enough that not too rigid that's beautiful yeah. wow beautiful. i had yeah i think w we've all had some stories like that where something overtook us our usual petty self <laughs> angry you know enraged self yeah yeah boy beautiful prakash yeah were you saying saying something no no i said it's a it's a it's a beautiful uh i mean, yeah. that's, uh, I mean like jeff said you just get overtaken at that point of time <laughs> uh, I think everything is let loose, and then you just uh, be the real self. I guess. I mean, it's just wonderful. Yeah. And it's one thing I found. I was just thinking in my mind. It's great that you can remember all these beautiful uh, events in life to be able to tell us all this nice, uh, nicely, so that you know we all can feel good about love. I mean, being loved and and to love. It's just beautiful. You know, I, I, like Jeff said, things like that did happen, I guess, in my life. But uh, somehow I just don't pay attention to this detail and <laughs> to narrate them to others and, uh, and share. But uh, I'm glad that uh, <laughs> you can and Jeff and everybody can. Thanks again. Yeah. Yeah. It just reminds me of like what, what Bob has said to I don't know if you shared this, Jeff, but what Baba said to somebody who was losing their family member or they had lost somebody in their life and Baba had said that they they had never existed. Oh, I yeah, heard, yeah. heard that. Malcolm Schloss. Malcolm yeah. Schloss. Like yeah. they never existed. That, yeah, that's, yeah, we got onto that subject one night. <laughs> <laughs> Jake, what you got um, going on? Um, what you got on tap? Take a lobe or? Oh, I think a little bit of. Uh, uh, I don't know. What I have on tap, um, I can't think of a witty response. But if, if I, uh, and to be honest, what I have on tap is trying to distinguish between, you know, what is a what what is a real, what, what loving act is really loving, you know? 
so if you feel, if you're feeling, so, so I'm feeling that I have a particular view that is right. And, um, and I keep getting these impulses to say no to this, to this experience. And um, despite that, you know, I will also sometimes get inklings, but not strong enough where I feel like it'll overpower the no to say yes. Furthermore, I also know that the loving thing to do sometimes, it, so if I, if I try to force my no, I know that the loving thing to do sometimes is to still say yes. You know, you're, you're wrong even though when you're right. And uh, to, know how, to, to know how to navigate that distinction between yes and no, I find, you know, overwhelming. Because part of my personality wants to say yes and please. Part of my, I, I struggle really standing up for something with a no, but then when I do, I struggle with it not being overpowering and destructive. So it's like this, whew, the balance of, uh, I don't know, knowing the balance of what a loving, of what loving act really is in, in a particular situation in my life, I find challenging. And uh, that's what I have on tap. And I'm not to get bogged down in anger with that. No, it's very, um, it's <clears throat> very, um, that's one of the major challenges in, I, I'd say, in the, in, spirit, in this life with Baba. Hmm. I mean, Baba, of course, said one thing that's, <laughs> that's a little disturbing. <laughs> where he said to Arnavas, it is nothing to give in when you are wrong, but it has spiritual value to give in when you are right. That is hard to, that's hard to swallow. It that, is. It's, that's, that's hard to stomach. But, but it's good to see that that's the bookend at that end, you know. <clears throat> um, in other words, that's, uh, it's, but <clears throat> it's, I, I find, I'm just not talking about my own experience. I try to say yes to everything first. Say yes to life, yet yes to this terrible thing that's happening, and then I can say no. Hmm. <clears throat> but if if I say no first, <clears throat> I'm not seeing, I'm not accepting this thing that's happening. Yes, it is happening. <clears throat> now, now that it's happening, I can say. Uh, I can then I can say no if it aligns with my <clears throat> my deeper feeling and if it's not going to hurt somebody hmm. you know I mean it's it's very <clears throat> it, I mean what you're talking about is one of the major um, um, what can I say uh, convergences <clears throat> of of very impelling forces. Yeah, it, it feels that way because I can. It's it's easy for me with that with that that quote that you shared about um, Baba talking to Arnavas. I can I can very easily say okay. Uh, then that's the you know the decision is made. I, I say yes. <clears throat> yeah. And then there's this part that, that this other layer of this whole thing is then that I then fear that it will bring about unnecessary suffering to others involved. Yeah. And, and that, and that, and that, that, that for me is hard. That's like a, a very difficult uh, standpoint, a very different, cro difficult crossroads to know where to go and how to navigate. So, but, but in any case, uh, I, I don't mean to, I don't want to, to, uh, yeah. <clears throat> to uh, bog down in this, and, unless it's helpful, uh, I mean, I'm no, happy I, to continue talking. But no, I, I, I think it's very pertinent to 
everyone's life, I would say. I mean, yeah. because, I mean, you, you want to get something that resonates with your interior. If it resonates with your interior and you wind up saying yes, if it resonates with your, <clears throat> if you have to humor somebody to say yes, but if it resonates in your heart, you can, you can handle it. But if there's a one part of you that's, that objects strongly, you know, then, then you've got the, the you've got the inner conflict. Yeah. Even the anger backing up. So it takes a lot to work it around so that <clears throat> what you express is, has your heart's approval at the deepest level. Yeah. That's and what I, I continue to try to strive yeah. to, to reach yeah that 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 deeper level of my heart that that is true you know feels steadily true and, and that's it's hard because i feel like there are so many mixed messages to then push or influence that that deeper feeling that i'm trying to reach to and, and can easily yeah you know um persuade me to make a make a decision that isn't really in line with that deeper space mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the ego. It's. I mean, I. I really feel like it's this, you know, interplay of the ego. You know, I mean, I. I can feel like right now. I just want to surrender, my ego. In this situation, just surrender it, and man, oh man. See, it, the thing too is that there's one thing standing up for yourself, which might be different from standing up for the truth. Yeah, that, that's a problem too. That that throws a monkey wrench into it hmm. because you might be standing up for yourself in a private way, but you might uh, might not be standing up for the 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 truth itself. Yeah, you know. So that throws that throws a monkey wrench into the yeah into get uh, w resolving this thing at the heart level. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that, that, I mean, I, I, I would identify that as being, um, yeah, sta standing up for my ego, my, my ego being what's standing up as opposed to my heart being what's standing up. And, yeah, uh, that, that, that distinction, I know it took me about, <laughs> probably about 15 years <laughs> to come up with one line, because I would, I would be asked to do things, you know. And I, I'd be kind of exhausted and tired and everything, you know, people just, you know, oh, I, I, uh, I need someone, to, I need, can you help me move this piano, mm. um, you know, over to this other house, my new place, you know, and I, I, I moved this same damn piano about three times and mo try moving a piano. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but anyway, I learned this line. Instead of saying no, which, which hurts people sometimes. I, w I would say, I would love to be able to help you move that piano, but I am so exhausted. I just, or I, I am so overscheduled, I just can't help you. But I, instead of, I just, you know, putting in then, I would love yeah. to be able to help you. And it is true, we would love to help or we, I'd love to say yes, you know, but yeah, I, I would love to say yes, but then it, it doesn't sit right in me. You know, it, it, uh, it's, it's disturbs my heart, you know? Yeah, uh, no, I, I love that. The, the, yeah. I, I love that framing because it is, it really puts the, the, the onerous on finding um, you know, finding the, the openness and the flow between you and that person and framing the, the, the no in that open and flowing way as opposed to, like you were saying, just leading with the no, which is, the, yeah. which is like a disconnect. You know, you can yeah. still express a lot of love to the, the individual and still say no through yeah. that method. I really appreciate that yeah, framing. I, I, I mean, that. I tell you, it took me a long time. <laughs> Uh, to uh, to come to that. <clears throat> yeah. Does this work for, for 
for like doing dishes like if your wife asks you to finish the dishes and, then, and you say you know honey adrian i am just so exhausted that i wish i could help you and i'm not uh, how'd you say it you yeah said it, you I'd, said love, it nicely. I'd love to be able to he help i'd love to be able to do this yeah but i'm just too exhausted oh, that's that's a good tip guys yeah. <laughs> no, hey, wait a minute there. Hold on. Hold on. Hold it. Hold it a minute. <laughs> hey, I thought we were just talking. <laughs> uh, Ellie, they all can. Not I thought it was just us talking. Jeff Woodward. is being a bad influence on, on husband. <laughs> Wife alert. <laughs> you, you really have to be on your deathbed, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to get away with that line. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm just kidding. The, the line does not work. I've tried it. <laughs> <laughs> but, because, but because you haven't found the love in the actual yes. <laughs> See, you can't dress up the no as a yes. You have yeah, to really yeah. feel the yes, Alan. That's <clears throat> That's yeah, you know, it's really true what you said, Jeff, about the the selfish, the selfish giving in, or what was it, the selfish part that wants the thing versus like um, giving in to the truth. It's like I've had to learn that with chores. Like really, like that's my big thing. Yeah, like I've had to be like, you know, it's it's. I've always been like, well, I don't want to do this, or I don't want. What do I have to? It's like, wait a minute, like, like for the good of all, we yeah. should all do the dishes here, or you know. I should do that, you know, or, you know, I just, I think it does, I, I'm in marriage, I'm seeing I cannot get what I want anymore, anymore. not the same way, but it's okay. Yeah. I mean, I've only been married for like a year and a half, so. I get, I get, a, 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 I get a dishwasher, you know. No. <laughs> No, the, the, uh, what you're talking about, Jake, though, these are, I mean, you're having to move around your whole, you're, you're basically moving around warehouses of sun scars to be mm. able to get the, I mean, you, love, it's not a problem with love, it's all the sun scars, you know, big batches of sun scars, you have to move them around till they're in alignment with your heart, you know, and that's a, a lot of internal work <clears throat> to do yeah. that. that. That makes a lot of sense, that visual picture, because there's, you know, a lot of the, re the, the, the feelings and reactions that stir get stirred up in me are feelings and reactions that do color other areas of my life um, outside of this one particular, one particular spot, you know? The way I, I carry my responsibilities. You know, and, and feel them as burdens, or um, you know, feel like, yeah, feel like I don't t tend to myself in a loving way, uh, and, and you know, as often as I should, and, and things like that. Anyway, that, that, that it really is a wonderful de depiction. Yeah, I appreciate that. Well, Jake, do you have an example of what you mean? I, I'm, I think I might have missed the first part of. Uh what you had said but uh, oh, is there a, yeah. an example of what you mean by by what you're talking about no i i don't think it would be very wise of me to share this example uh, uh can, even with the even going, with the prospects of it being edited out i don't think it would it's not my place to share this uh, uh but only talk like, about it mean like an, an example like an, any example like something to help me understand the con the the exact Thing, what you were saying something that uh, doesn't happen in your life yeah say that again jeff something that that doesn't happen in your life but you see it happening in other people's lives so <clears throat> get an example that you see from someone else's life i gotta go guys good night hey, Jay baba Anita. Hey, yeah. baba Anita. Hey, Baba. Yeah. Good night. Jay Baba. Good night. Yeah. Jay Baba. Good night. Bye, Dinku. Bye, Bye. Dinta. Call it again.
So uh, I'm sorry, Alan. I, I don't think I have a. I'm not really sure how to 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 do what you're asking, uh, in this situation. Um, okay, let me let me just try to go over what I think you were saying, right? Yeah. So so you're saying there's situations where we feel like uh, a sense of like I don't know. This is you can correct me, but if you feel like a sense of like a no in ourselves, some part of ourselves is saying no to a situation but we know that we're trying to keep peace or truth with another person. And so we say yes, but then we feel like a little bit resentful or something comes up or there's just like this buildup of like something doesn't sit right or just something's not, there's that conflict of like mm -hmm. what you want to do, what, what you feel is right. What you feel is like, this is my truth. And then somebody else is saying, well, this is my truth. And then where do you find the bridge to move forward in love? Yes, that's absolutely correct. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to, yeah. I just wanted to make sure no, that, that, yeah. <clears throat> okay. I just wanted to clarify because I thought I heard, I thought I heard it, I heard it different, but then I was going to clear it up. Okay. Yeah. What I, what I love about uh, this dynamic, this, 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 this situation is that I feel like it requires self-awareness um, to really be able to navigate these different things that get stirred up these different aspects of my internal state that that i'm i'm trying to to weave my way through and uh that's uh, and i'm and, and i'm always intrigued by by self-awareness and, and 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 for alan i think that's something that you share so beautifully it, your sharing comes from so much self-awareness and i'm just curious what is what is self-awareness exactly you know because it can mean you can have you can be capable of talking about your to, about yourself in a very narcissistic way and that wouldn't necessarily be you know self-awareness and there's the stories of Erich talking about how he had self-awareness and that's why he wouldn't get the wrath of Baba as much as say Bao would if a mistake was made and and whatnot so I'm just curious like what is self self-awareness really if it can be boiled down Aside from being knowing that you're God, obviously, like that kind of self realization. Yeah, what do you say, Jeff? You I was hoping for... you could say Alan. <laughs> you Alan. Me? Are you asking me? Oh, yeah, I'm asking you, Alan. And, and you can't say no. <laughs> <laughs> what is self awareness to me? Uh, Well, I feel like when I, if you're talking about where, something where I've shared something and then it's made sense to you or it's connected with you, it's because I usually, if I, when I share to you guys or in this space or and I'm thinking of Baba so much so and it's like focused, then these memories kind of come up or the things come up in that present moment, they just happen to be there. Uh, and they're they kind of play out in front of my my eyes or like internal my internal mind and then and then they just happen to be present it's just it just happens to be in that present moment that's what's coming up fluid it's fluid fluidly happening and i'm not prepare, i'm not pre-preparing or pre-planning or 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 trying to make anything happen and that for me that feels comfortable it feels very very feels very freeing to be able to speak from that that kind of place and i don't know if that's just my makeup where i'm just talking and that's just happens to be like i like telling stories but <laughs> uh they're not stories just to tell stories usually it's like i feel a, i feel an instance in my heart right you know mm -hmm. to to say something because it feels like this is what needs to be said this like in that moment there's that's something I learned a lot in improv, just stepping on stage and, and a lot of people, you know, would be like, well, how did you, why would you make that choice to do that? Wouldn't you afraid that people would look at you like you're crazy or that, that you know, you, you would have this reaction from the audience and, and it, it ended up being like this, like it worked out. But how'd you take that chance? I was like, because I, you have, I, I feel like I, in, in certain moments where like I'm with people that I can be myself or if I can share myself in my heart then 
then it's almost like it's like I, I I see Baba again. I see him walking across like the at that hotel. It's like the Marriott Hotel. I don't know where it was. The hotel in 1956 or something. But it's like he's like he was like he's like the king. Like he he gives us the strength. Like the king. He's like the king. He's walking. It's just like he, there's nothing that he. <laughs> There's nothing to fear. There's nothing that is not true. It's he, I mean, for him, he's the truth. And when I look at him and I think of him and I'm speaking with him in mind, then I trust that what I'm saying just happens. That's the present moment for me. Like that's the, that's the self-awareness, I guess. Like it's just, it just is, it is that present moment. Like that's what's, that's what's, necessary <laughs> i don't know and sometimes i mess up or sometimes it's uh, uncomfortable for other people and they tell me that's not okay or that made me feel this way or that way but i don't know that's that's yeah. as far as i know it sounds like you stay very emotionally flexible <clears throat> uh, yeah. de depending on the circumstances but i i know like if, if the awareness can, if the tentacles of awareness can be withdrawn from being enmeshed in the feelings and thought, then you can move it around <clears throat> and see how you, not how you feel, but how your heart, how your love, how is love weighing into this situation? There's your feelings, there's your emotions, there's your, your body, there's your thoughts. But how is love uh, weighing in on this? And that, to somehow free the awareness so that it can go and get the what love has to say. Uh, if you if you can get an answer from love, and that's not easy, but if you can get an answer from love, not from your feelings or your thoughts, <clears throat> uh, you can you can even you can even seemingly betray yourself and still feel whole and complete. Yeah. Oddly enough, you can, because I mean, what if you were black in the, in the South? I mean, you couldn't, you know, you had to say yes. I mean, the circumstances of life, you had to say a lot, an external yes on so many situations because it's gonna endanger your family, your wife and kids. You can't just say no. You know, so you have to, what is love indicating in this situation? And that's not so much how I feel about the situation, but what love has to say. Yeah, and it, yeah that, that, that makes sense. Moving the needle from the, you know, one, one step further into the, into the loving dimension. And yeah. that's, I mean, that the whole spiritual life is, is happening right at, you know, where the way body, thought, emotions and feelings, and then love behind it, you know, how to navigate so you can get to the love. Yeah, you kind of, you know? that makes sense. I, I do have, uh, you know, practice with trying and the experience, experiences of, you know, sitting, sitting in, in, in more of a, just a place of awareness as opposed to identifying with, yeah. with feelings, like you said, um, and, and emotions. And uh, so I can certainly, I can see how that fits into that category of that, that self-awareness where you're, you're, you get a vantage point of yourself from, you know, external to all of those moving parts. Yeah, um, good. Is that like the provisional ego? Is, I'm assuming that's the provisional ego. Another name for this is the provisional ego. I guess you would call that. I, I mean, uh, that's that's another whole uh, <clears throat> that's another whole dimension to the. But uh, if, if you can get what love wants to do, then then automatically you be your your thoughts and your feelings and your motion and your body become a vehicle yeah. <clears throat> you know if, if you can touch if you can touch where love is then everything else flows the love flows through it it of course 
when love, if you contact love in yourself, then it's got to, I mean, it has to go through your emotional complexes, your history, your hangups, your strengths and everything. By the time it comes out the front, it's not, doesn't have the pristine beauty that it started with, you know. But see, some people think, oh, wow, I'm, I, am I, you know, that wasn't real love because it should have gone through purely. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, should have, it should have gone through me in the same way I originally felt it, experienced it. <clears throat> but you have to, you have to believe that the distinction between things that or originate from love and things that originate from our sanskaras, our bundle of sanskaras, they're two different places. And that's why I, I've said that distinguishing between the highest good in yourself and love, we get fooled. That highest form of love, that sublime love, a uh, si uh, sublime feeling we have, is not necessarily love. It's, it, it's, it can be made up of sun scars sure. that are reflecting love. They're the effect of love, but they're not the origin of love. I don't know if that makes sense, but as withdrawing the consciousness back in there, or awareness in there, if you can get to love, then things flow. But if you can't, <clears throat> Sometimes I can't get to the place of love, so I just have to go with plan B. I got to come go with my best feeling, mm -hmm. <laughs> my best slot thought, my best feeling. Does that yeah. make sense? That does make sense. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I am not happy with it, but I have to do the right thing or the good thing. Mm. The best good and the best right thing I can do. But that is not necessarily love. I mean, that took a long time for me to see that distinction. And, and Erich helped me make that distinction between love and good or virtue. So like when you were saying, you know, to, to see if I had this one particular part um, understood when, when the love reflects off of say a group of sanskaras, like we were fooled to think that, oh, this, this, this sense of, of wanting to do something kind for someone um, is the loving deed, but I'm actually being, could be fooled and that, that, you know, that, that might not really be the case. Is that what you're saying? Like, like uh, we can be fooled because our sanskaras are kind of motivating us to, to say, you know, I, I don't know. Yes. Like, like, like saying yes to extending a homework deadline for a student, but but realistically, the, the highest good would be to say, or the, the loving act would be to say, no, you don't get this deadline, or you have to meet this deadline. I'm not going to give you this yeah. picture. Yeah. Are you saying that, that, that that's what you mean by it? that's where, how we could be fooled sometimes? Because our Sanskars want to reflect yeah. to us that, that that's the best thing to do is to give the extension to be compassionate, kind, always. Yeah, it, uh, that's like I say, it, <clears throat> that it takes incredible sensitivity there. I mean, it, it's like you have to be a jeweler that can distinguish between a diamond and a crystal. <clears throat> Most human beings wouldn't be able to tell, you know, and distinct, distinguish between the highest good in you and love. L love is spontaneous and the highest good is, is still calculated. It's one it's a millisecond, at best, a millisecond short of spontaneity. You see, a <laughs> you see a situation, you plug in the formula, and then you do it. <clears throat> but Dar uh, er Erich said, there's nothing wrong with good. I, I mean, but if you can get to love, it's a lot better. Hmm. I mean, this is really getting up to, I, I call it post graduate uh, uh, sensitivity and discrimination. But if that happens, things go much more smoothly. Yeah. You know, Jeff, I, I feel like I, I, I feel like lately I've just been so overcome with so many times where I have to 
like as of recently, especially like to say yes to situations and people. And, and I, I mean, the feeling of, of, of just like, just, I mean, I don't know how to tell you, it feels like being crushed like a can or something like, I don't know if that's emotional or if that's mental or what, what's going on, but sometimes I just can't even, uh, I can't even like hold awareness about it all. You know, it's like, it feels like it's too much to try to, to try to keep track of, of everything that's going on and uh, kind of like too much static it's too much static yeah uh, you can't find the it's hard to tell what melody um <clears throat> is being played yeah yeah and it, it just it's like um but uh, but i'm aware of like what i have enough awareness to be like well i know that this for me is where uh this is the truth for me in this moment or this is the truth this is a true decision for me based on the small window that i have of like i'm just so exhausted with all the things it just i have to just sort of trust or lean on baba that like even if i am making a mistake or like or like i am thinking this way about myself or i'm thinking this way about those people or i feel like i should be making a different decision I feel like my mind, it's not used to this, but I, I, and it's very painful. Like I said, it's like a crushing of a can, but it's like, I'm used to just thinking a lot more, uh, a lot more. <laughs> and, I, and I can't really think as much, even though I'm working a lot or I'm talking to people, or I'm in all this. And it, it just feels like I'm a little bit upset sometimes at Baba because I'm like, well, who, who am I now? <laughs> I don't know who I am anymore. <laughs> Good. I don't know. Like I had all these ways I thought I, I things I liked and all these people I liked and this is what I stand for and this is my truth and I don't even know what that is. And I feel like it's just every time I, I I'm like yeah I remember that and then it just mm -hmm. like Baba just forces me to open my hand and drop it again on the ground. And, yeah. And I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing or. Well, I, from my point of view, I think it's a good thing. <clears throat> I mean, if you define yourself. <clears throat> too strongly, then you have to live by that definition. I, I kind of, I kind of got to be, um, I kind of chose to be a little bit nebulous about who I am. <clears throat> it gives me a lot, a lot more freedom. I don't have to uh, stick to a particular type of behavior. I mean, I can, I'm flexible. Uh, I think a, a nebulous se sense of self, but a, a consciously chosen nebulous sense of self is not as i find is better than than knowing myself in the uh, defining myself because if you define yeah. yourself <clears throat> then you know there are people you know how you run into people like oh i like this i don't like that this is this this is not this is my taste and they've got their yeah. all, all the defined and they have a confidence you know but yeah. I look at it and say, whoa, <laughs> wait till Baba gets a hold of you. <laughs> now, uh, one thing about spontaneity of, uh, I mean, love expre expresses itself spontaneously. But I guess that also might lead you into situations where you keep saying yes to something because you really want to do it, but then uh, you may not commit to its delivery properly in the sense like you know i mean i want to do this so it'll be a nice thing to do it'll be a loving thing to do uh, but then one can pile on so many things that uh, you may just uh, slip the schedule and uh, not be able to meet what you committed to is that uh, something that happens to any of you you know, I mean, you feel like, you know, you really want to help each time. I mean, somebody needs help. I mean, you say, okay, fine, don't worry, I'll do it. And then, but then I guess either you committed, uh, you know, without much conviction or whatever, um, <laughs> then uh, yeah, one tends to slip and it happens to me and uh, I, I feel bad about it. But, uh, and because of lethargy or whatever basic setup I have, 
uh, I tend not to do things on time, even though I really wanted to do it. Yeah. Yeah, no, that, that I'm sorry. I, I, I'm not going to be able to take you to the airport in a half hour. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so. Um, no, that's. Uh, well, even, that's, even if you do it, it's fine. But no. sometimes you just let it burn uh, and uh, not be able to actually bring it on. Do it in time and then it keeps just sort of. Yeah. What, you, you, it's in your mind, but you still can't get to do it. And that kind of problem happens. Uh, no, that that's. I know. It, basically, it's it's like you, uh, no, you got to know your sanskaras. Right, right. <laughs> what your yeah. sanskaras are going to be able to keep, capable of doing on a given day. No, I, I my thing is I have to link things up with my enthusiasm. If I don't have enthusiasm for something. Uh, I, I don't like to use willpower to do things. So I have to work, I have to move around internally to, uh, uh, to find where, get my enthusiasm connected to that particular thing in front of me. Otherwise, yeah, because <laughs> I'm reminded of uh, a lady who came to Baba and she said, uh, I want to help. I mean, because that's the right thing to do. And then Baba's question is, but do you know how to help, <laughs> you know? And that, that was so beautiful, I, I thought. That, that's where what you said comes in. You should know your uh, uh, own basic setup in terms of what you can, what you cannot. Yeah. And then I guess uh, uh, we should be able to make a conscious decision whether we can actually do it or not do it. Yeah, I mean, that's all kind of a refining process you know, the, uh, yeah. You know, I mean, I can simply quote, give you this example. I mean, it's, uh, I went to one of Baba websites <clears throat> and then they said, we need transcribing help. The first thing that pops up when you go there is we need help for transcribing. I said, wow, this is great. I mean, it's a Baba's work. And I, I committed to it and then boom comes uh, <laughs> um, the necessary stuff from them. And uh, and I was transcribing it, but I found it's so, <laughs> it's not an easy thing to do transcribing, at least in my mind, as I kept doing it. Uh, something like a five minutes of talk by somebody can take as good as uh, a few hours, basically. Uh -huh. And uh, it can get a bit annoying sometimes because people say something so quickly and uh, and and you really have to dig deep into the context. And sometimes you even have to look into books like Lord Maher to see, I mean, what happened on this particular day. And then, then you say, oh, this is what they're trying to say. And so the point is, it does take a bit of time. Yeah. And I sat on it. <laughs> and, um, and then I feel bad about it, but I'm trying to <laughs> work through it. And so this is where I committed because I really want to. I, want to do some sort of uh, this kind of work. But then when I actually got down to it, I'd slipped up. And, uh, <laughs> so, and wow. so that that's, that sort of thing happens to me sometimes. Yeah, no, that, that's happened to me too. It's... And, but the, again, there is another piece of work. I go to a nauseous place, nauseous, nausea dumps, something like 500 audio cassettes to me. And he says, uh, I need help on this. Can you, you know, digitize them? And I do them so fast. I mean, uh, the other day I told him I finished some hundred of them in a few days. He said, whoa, you're already, already done. So, I mean, that's where I guess, I mean, where I feel really enthusiastic about doing something. And um, the other one didn't appeal to me that. But then uh, the feeling inside was to do something. Uh, it didn't work in the second case, but it does work in <laughs> other example. So. Yeah, yeah. When when in your enthusiasm is, is ignited, it's a lot easier yeah. to follow through. You know, people say I'm very energetic, but I it, I have to kind of pick and choose. Yeah, that's true. My enthusiasm, and I can do it. But there are a lot of things uh, if I were asked to do or had to do. Uh, it would be difficult. I don't have the energy to do it unless unless the enthusiasm is there. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's like it's like how did 
you know, I was reading that Erich a lot of the time would just let things like around, uh, you know, around the place. He, he would just let things happen. Like he wouldn't tell the, the residents to like, or who was it? No, he would, there were certain people, certain group of people, like he would never tell them to stop like making a ruckus or like one time they found somebody who was like drinking and he just didn't think that they should have told them to leave. They, he felt like they should have taken away the alcohol and, you know, reiterated like the, the rules. And they're like, why did he, he would just never, he wouldn't tell people like what to do. And I just always wonder about that. Like if he had the authority to do so, why didn't he ever take that? chance and tell people like you know, stop the ruckus a little bit more yeah i mean uh i i i find uh, and i think it, it kind of holds <clears throat> someone might not do something because i've told them not to do it so they won't do it around me but they'll oh. they'll, they'll do it around they'll continue to do it <clears throat> so that my my stopping them w when they're around me isn't it isn't really making a, a any real change you know <clears throat> that's the there's a line um it, it's a zen line those who know and do not do do not know those who know and do not do do not know well, I'll, I'll give you an I I idea, like, from marriage. <clears throat> there was a, a group that used to come to, um, you know, to India to, for Amartiti. Uh, it was the Society for Avatar Mir Baba, and they would put on plays. And, you know, there are thousands and thousands of people there. <clears throat> and they, because they brought all this equipment and were prepared to do these shows, and they were really wonderful shows, but they would get in line. Sometimes the line would go all the way down the railroad tracks, you know, and they would kind of get up, up toward the front of the line. And, you know, year after year, they would kind of do that. If they wanted to go to the tomb, they would kind of, you know, basically we're Westerners and <clears throat> they would uh, kind of uh, butt into line, into the line. <clears throat> and this went on for years. And one day, uh, the head of this group, came and uh, into the trust office and said, Erich, you know, is there anything that we can do? And Erich kind of pauses and says, well, yeah, maybe, maybe if your group, if you would just kind of wait in line like everyone else. Oh, yes, Erich, we'll do that. I'm sorry, we'll do that and everything. And then a friend of mine was there, a guy named Steve Klein said, after she left, Steve said, why don't you, they, they've been doing this for years. They've been doing this for the, over 10 years. Why didn't, why didn't you tell her 10 years ago? And Eris said, but she never asked. <laughs> In other words, you know, if, if, if there, if, if, the, if uh, it doesn't come from the person, <clears throat> it's not going to make any change mm -hmm. that, you know, it's just kind of an external thing. You, you're not allowed to do that anymore. <clears throat> it, it doesn't, <clears throat> I find mm. it, it's, it's gotta be, um, someone has to, for any real change, I think people have to ask. <clears throat> yeah. I find that with teaching, uh, often, <clears throat> working with some of the mo more challenging students, you know, I, I have, I can try to push and, and fight them on their behavior or the, some of the choices that they've made um, that may only impact themselves or other people. And I don't really get anywhere. Stop or, 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 you know, uh, agree to something on a surface level, but at a much deeper level, they, 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 nothing has really changed. Um, and so I really, I, I really have to, I struggle sometimes knowing how to respond because I know if I try to, you know, it, I, I think teachers oftentimes get into trouble and make the mistake of trying to force a change rather than knowing when a change is really, uh, 
when a change is really possible and you have to really read and, and kind of get a feel for the other person and know when they're, when, like you said, when they're ready to ask for the change. And that's a, it's a really challenging thing to navigate as a teacher, because if you, it can become easy to fall into the trap of trying to push someone to change. And when you do that, you really can make a real big mess of things. You yeah. get into a battle, the push pull, the, and they can have drastic effects on, on the classroom environment. But <clears throat> so, so sometimes I really have to like, just let things, let certain behaviors and actions go because yeah. trying to really intervene with them won't help at all. It will do more damage than good um, until that person is ready to, to do something <clears throat> that needs changing or it's also that person's ready to, to, to want to change. And I got to reiterate since this, this is being live, if the person's action or is being recorded, since if the person's action was really harmful to somebody else, then yeah. well, certainly I have to step in yeah. as my role as a teacher. But if it's something minor and yeah. it's not really hurtful, but disruptive rather, then I tend to let it go. Yeah. And, and I mean, if, you, if they can feel you're on their side, you know, I would like you to, to be able to pass this course. I'd like you to do this because I know that it's going to make a difference in your life. I mean, that's, that's, that, that's about the best you can do as far yeah. as, you know, they feel that you're, you're, you're in their court for them, but if they don't budge, <clears throat> yeah, there's uh, not much you can do. I mean, it, it, all these things are really very subtle. <laughs> you know, it reminds me of uh, being proactive. Uh, I, I, as a very small situation that uh, I happened to read somewhere, and this happens in uh, Satara. Uh, Baba is uh, in, I think, one of the bungalows there, I think dark bungalow or something. And then uh, Erich, uh, it's not Erich, it's Bhav who would carry some water or something back and forth. And on the way, he sees a bunch of people who are not actually very uh, rowdy kind. And they would taunt Bhav and say, what is this you're doing? I mean, you're, you're following Mahar Baba and all this stuff. I mean, you're wasting your time. And and Bob now feels that uh, he should actually help them out by actually talking about Baba and uh, make them understand what it's all about. And then he would spend some time. And then after he does that couple of days, then uh, Baba asks him, what are you doing on the way? So And Bob says, look, uh, I see these people who probably could help some uh, could could get some uh, uh, knowledge about uh, what you have taught and everything. So I'm just uh, trying to teach them. I mean, tell them about you. And then Baba said, you're only wasting time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you should know when to, you know, uh, talk about me to these people and all that stuff. I mean, I, I know I'm not saying it the way exactly how it happened. But the gist of it is basically, I mean, somehow we have to have this inner sense to realize if people are ready to, or they are receptive or not receptive. And that's, I think, is the key. And yeah. not easy though. I mean, sometimes you really want to help people. I and mean, I've seen people who just go forward and you know do all nice things in life uh, to each uh, Tom, Dick and Harry, but then not always it works. But uh, their enthusiasm is such that they just keep, uh, <laughs> doing the right thing and uh, that, uh, you know, decision is not that easy actually. Yeah, you know, something else that I find as a teacher in this, in this dance of knowing, knowing how to respond to different situations is that it's much easier, well, no, no, is that when you're choosing not to confront someone about a behavior or let behavior slide, it really becomes, at least I find, in managing the energy and the environment of the classroom, it really becomes something then for me to hold. I kind of have to hold that space for them to, for them to, to, to enact that behavior. Yeah. And that, that really then requires, like it's so much easier to hold that space when I've created space within myself for that behavior to exist without it being an assault or an affront to myself to then hold and be in relationship with until the time comes for the, you know, for them to, to be willing to change or for me to offer something that they can really hear because they're willing to be receptive. Yeah. Beautiful. Oh, really? That's. 
I mean, Jake, if I may ask, you deal with the high school kids, right? Yeah. <laughs> they can be a little difficult to work with. I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, I. <clears throat> That, that's one of the hardest jobs today because yeah. the focus uh, and, the, and, and the appreciation of a teacher just isn't what it used to be. Even though that's what I, I always feel about teachers. Yeah. They should get paid three or four times than what they get paid. I mean, it, yeah. their, their work to reform the society is just incredible. I mean, it's just unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. The well, amount of much, work they put in and uh, uh, the benefit the society gets out of them is just tremendous, tremendous. Yeah. Maybe I'm yeah. Just, yeah. Well, I certainly think it's, it's, it's even much more than, than more pay. Wow, that's certainly nice. I mean, you know, <clears throat> Prakash, I, I, would love, I would love it if you granted me three or four times my salary. That would be wonderful. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, even, even more than that, it's... Uh, even the teachers, I don't, in, in, in many cases, even the teachers don't receive the, the real training that's necessary to work with people to help enact real internal change. You know, we, we were trained to help create <laughs> cognitive change, but not trained to help enact internal change. And, and maybe some people could even argue that's outside and beyond the scope of a teacher. You know, how, how are you supposed to teach and, and train teachers to do that in a safe manner you know we're not psychologists or or, or whatnot uh but but i really feel like that's where the the, the work lies is is yeah. you know yeah you have both dimensions you need both uh, dimensions yes absolutely the other dimension especially well some places do yeah yeah <clears throat> did yeah. you uh Alan, did you did you ever experience any teachers in in your education that you felt had, you know, a foot in both of those dimensions, being able to help you cognitively change, right, but then also more on an internal level change? Um, yeah, there was a a teacher in my high school who uh, he was a very particular. He, he stands particularly in my mind because he was both very. Well, number one, he was very passionate about what he taught, and he really enjoyed it. And, and because of that, he basically, um, he basically was so creative in the way that he presented his ideas, and he was so passionate about it, but it was quiet. It wasn't like he was like, hey, you guys. It was, just, it was more like he just involved everybody at the same time in the, in the subject, and he was so present in himself with the subject. He was so one with, I could say he was so one with the subject that everyone sort of, it was this kind of this quiet, I mean, I could look back now and say it was this sort of this quiet for, for the age group we were, 15, 16, pretty much like a quiet reverence to, the, to his passion, to what he, what he really loved to teach, which was uh, cultural geography, something like that. Uh, world civilization, something like that. And, and he was just, he just, we just come sit down and there's this presence. Like he just, he was just like quest. He would just, you know, look at somebody and we'd be like, why is he looking at that person? And then we'd be like, everybody would be like, you could sense like this guy's doing something. We don't get it. Like what the heck? Like it would like, I look, talk to my friend, like, yo, he's like, the class is just starting. Like he's just looking at that dude. Like, what's he doing? What's, what's, what's this guy doing? And then everybody would be like, what? And everybody starts quieting down. And then he just kind of staring. And the guy, and the guy wouldn't even be paying attention. And so he'd be like, oh, oh hi, hi, Mr. You know, uh, uh, can I help you? Or what? And then he would just be like, do you know where that something, something? And he would just bring up the subject, something they were wearing, something about their the book they were carrying, something about whatever it was. He would bring that moment into the, the course subject of the day. And he would be telling a story and then he'd be asking questions to all these different people. And he just inspired me to work. To, I, I was like, honestly, memorizing. I was working so hard in that class, but it felt effortless on my, on my end because he was <laughs> in, his, in his teaching style. It, it just it inspired me. It was inspiring. 
yeah and and he was very he was very like no no like uh what's the word like even though he's passionate he wasn't like okay you guys can do it yeah it's all right like you guys you know i understand like you, you can come to class late or whatever like he was pretty stern but it was also like yeah like he, he just and, and a couple of times i caught him on some stuff because i was like Hey, uh, you gave me a 97 on this, but like I have my paper here and, and it, was, it was a 99. So could you correct that? <laughs> he was like, mm. oh, I'm sorry. Like, I, yeah, totally. I'm, I'm very sorry about that. Yeah, of course. And he was, mm. he, was he, he inspired me. He, he wanted me to go to Stanford because I was, a, I was, he, yeah, he was really rooting for me. And, and it was really sad for me personally when I had that downfall in high school and I just, kind of dropped out and he was he was he was like kind of one of those father figures I never had kind of thing but he he couldn't really help me beyond that, beyond that point he tried he, he I, I remember him looking at me in the face looking in my eyes and just being like he just wanted to say so much more he wanted to say so much more to me he saw my potential he's like I just Alan I wish you the best and I know that you're capable of so much, okay? And I was like, "Yep, thank you." But I, but I already knew that I, my, it was like, my road was gonna go dark. <laughs> like, I knew that it was not gonna be, you know, the way that we both had uh, hoped for in the year. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> you know, the the teachers, and I didn't find very many who were really and really loved their subject and were passionate about the subject. Be, <clears throat> say, if someone is really passionate about history, you know, if they, if they can convey the passion and the enthusiasm for it, then the rest of your life, you can, you know, pick up history books and e educate, e educate yourself because they've, they've passed on the enthusiasm for it. But I mean, so many uh, subjects, I mean, I haven't even returned to them at all. You know, <laughs> I got good grades and everything, but I I didn't pick up the love for the subject <clears throat> because they many of them didn't have the love for the subject. And you know, if if I'd had a calculus teacher that really loved calculus, I might have, you know, continued to some interest in in mathematics. But you know, that thing just went right off the. <laughs> Went <laughs> <laughs> off the charts, oh, man. Yeah, but, <clears throat> yeah. So I mean, the educational system's all kind of screwed up, and the, they should just pick people who have a great love and enthusiasm for a particular subject, and just have these people <clears throat> teach, <clears throat> and because it's it's an the ability to be enthusiastic about studies. <clears throat> It doesn't even matter so much what it is. If you have an enthusiasm, you'll educate yourself. Mm -hmm. True. Um, you know, and uh, but there weren't many. I mean, really. I mean, I went through. I, I, I and I got really good grades and everything, and I hardly remember anything. <laughs> <laughs> is that your experience, even through college? <clears throat> even through college, God. My, my, yeah, I realized <clears throat> what I was looking for in life. I didn't know what I was looking for, but it wasn't in academia. <clears throat> so I just learned how to uh, just get by. Yeah. Well, I, I'll let you guys continue. Jay yeah. Baba. Yeah, I've got to go uh, pretty soon. Jay Baba Prakash. Jay Baba. Prakash. Jay Baba. Jay Baba. Jay Baba. Jay Baba. Good night. Okay, Jay Baba. That? Uh, Jay Baba, thank you. Yes. If I'm anything to say, I mean, here we're just sitting around. Anytime you folks want to jump in, this is just an open conversation. It's all good, you know. I uh, had a really long day at work. Yeah. And as yeah. you guys were talking, I was just soaking in uh, a lot of conflicts between people. And I have to do a performance evaluation of uh, this person that I was really concerned she might leave her position. 
and oh, I prepared for this. I stayed up last night and I was just giving it to Baba and asking Baba to help and knowing that she has certain weaknesses, but she has a lot of strengths. And I tell you, I, you know, it was with another doctor. It was a big meeting today. And all was said until I got to this one thing and talk about when love takes over. And I just acknowledged her, you know, I said, you're such a caring, loving person. And I so appreciate that I get to work with you. Oh my God, tears are rolling down her eyes. It's like, that was the only thing that she really needed to hear, I think. All the other heady stuff that we spent an hour talking was like, <laughs> that was, one part of the scale and then those few phrases just shifted the whole thing i said you know people just want to feel loved sometimes yeah i don't know i just yeah. so yeah. I'm listening to when you said it just when you come from a space of love uh and you know and i said the word love you know in a kind of a professional meeting you're not <laughs> really you don't talk about love so much, you know? Yeah, yeah. But I said some of these things, and, um, and I know it touched her heart, and I know it shifted her maybe attitude or just reconnecting with why she might want to stay in her position and yeah. not leave the company. So, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. beautiful. Part of what, are you, what are you for work? Oh, Baba puts me in all these roles. I have no idea how I ended up in this role. So I'm a psychologist. <laughs> oh, wow. And I work with um, young children and adults. Yeah, but mostly kids. And so we have this clinic. It's only, I don't know, there's three, four of them in the country that see two-year-olds to six-year-olds for, and it's, it's really, it, lots of people, lots of people who help these kids who have multiple things, you know, developmental delays or autism. And then they have all these emotional things like severe anxiety, like severe OCD. Yeah. Some of them come from very troubled families. Um, they're, every one of them's a little different, but you know so there's the work to be done for the kids and then there's the work to be done for the people who work with the kids yeah. so this was one of them and she's a very capable person uh but a lot of power struggles between the staff sometimes this one says we should do it this way that one says no we should do it that way so i can t every week i'm on a roller coaster yeah <laughs> And you know, Jeff, what you said one time really helped me, which was I was having a lot of problems that there were so many problems at this place. And probably every year I've been there eight years, I say, I'm going to leave. That's it. I'm done. I I'm not going to, well, what is this? You know, I can do, do my private practice. It's so much easier, but I don't know. Baba just pulls me right back in. I think it's Baba. I don't think, I don't know. So <laughs> I keep doing it. And, uh, and I finally accepted. It's just going to be problems. There's just always going to be problems. And you know, I actually said that phrase to the person. I said, you know, somebody very wise, or I said something like that, told me, you know, <laughs> that you know, there are going to be problems. And maybe I'm the one who's having a problem that there are problems. Yeah. So we can get through this, I told her. You know, there's going to be problems and conflicts between us, but we all care about being here and doing the work we're doing. So I hope we, you know, we can work through it and we'll be stronger because of it if we can, you know? So that's the heady stuff. People get that, I think, at some level. The people who are, at least the people I work with who are committed to helping these kids, but the, you know, the struggle's still there when you have to deal with people. Yeah. Um, Do you, you work know, with behavior, behavior technicians? 
Yes, exactly. That's what I used to do. Really? Yeah. I did that for a quick minute. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I did it for about a year, or I, I think almost a year, but it, it was, um, wow. yeah, it was, um, it was very, it was very um, challenging, but also rewarding for sure. Um, but yeah, that, that's, that's, uh, you, are you working one-on-one -on -one with the, with the children or is it more like you're working with the people who work with? Yeah, I, I supervise them, but, um, so I work with the family sometimes, but there are like multiple things going on with these kids. Well, usually there are, you know, multiple things, but, uh, so they'll have their speech therapist who works with them, their occupational therapist, the behaviorist. I work with the families, um, and then there's a physician who was the neurologist who also works with the families and the kids. So, wow, so, so you're, like this, you're like the senior, are you, is that senior position? Yeah. I never would, so, I, I would never be able to talk to you where I was at. I never, I never had conversations <laughs> with that position. <laughs> <laughs> I was dealing with, I was dealing with, uh, you know, just the families. And then I would get a call like, we want this from you. I'm like, okay. Or go. I don't know. Like I said, I never studied to do this kind of thing, but that's where I am. And that's I keep a, telling a, the person, I think it's time for me to leave. You guys are, have this under control. You can get another psychologist. And it's, you know what's funny? The person who created the program, her mother knows my mother and knows about Meher Baba. Wow. <laughs> There we go. Yeah. There we go. So sometimes when I would go to India, I'd bring her back prasad. I said I came back from India. He said, and she would thank me so much, you know, and just, you know, she's like one of these top professors at UCLA who does all, you know, well known. And she's like, oh, you brought me back prasad. Thank you. I'm gonna give it to my kids. Hmm. You know, it's wow. There's a connection, I guess. Wow. Now, this is how Baba gets it done, you know. <clears throat> and it's, you know, there, there was somebody, uh, I don't know if you know Sheila Krinsky, but she worked at Sherry Art Press. Uh, yeah, I met her once or twice, yeah. She was teaching school in a New York school system mm -hmm. and was just, and, and you know, just, just going through it. I mean, just so... Uh, angry at these kids i mean their behavior and everything like that. yeah and while she was going through all of this she received a cable from baba saying something he is very pleased with wow what he's doing and i mean like it was like uh, but in other words, just the amount of frustration that she was bearing must have been very pleasing to baba but for her it was yeah. just terrible. You know, she was so glad to get out of the school system. Yeah. So what a wonderful know. example of uh, what, what you were talking about earlier, Jeff, in terms of what love, you know, the, the difference between the feelings of love and the act of love, you know, that, that holding that space and being in relationship with those kids for, for Sheila was really an act of love, even though it felt miserable to her. Yeah, I, I certainly sympathize with that experience. I can't imagine how hard and trying that is. Yeah, uh, and but, and you, uh, it'd be good if you could get a cable. I mean, uh, to know. I mean, w look at you're taking this so sincerely, and you're caring about these kids and everything. How could Baba not be so pleased with you? Mm. Even though for you, it's it's you know it's it's. Uh, it's a very frustrating experience in, in some ways, you know, and with little yeah. rewards here and there. Yes. But overall, it's like, yeah. it's like, uh, <clears throat> yeah, you just yeah. don't know, because uh, sometimes love, so, sometimes you're expressing love and you don't even know you are. So that, mm -hmm. so you're, um, and, <clears throat> 
and and yet Baba knows, you know. I mean, yeah. I think Baba's much more pleased with us than we would ever imagine. <laughs> but he, well, can't, I hope so. You can't get to, you can't get a, a, a cable to us. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, that's that's somebody, a great. Uh, somebody else can look at you and say, "God, what a loving! Look at this person. They're doing so loving, mm -hmm. so engaged, so caring." Like you said to your your fellow colleague there. Mm -hmm. She may not be getting any feedback like that. Yeah. You know, she's just down in the trenches and, but then you can look over, I mean, or at least Baba gave you that, the, the, yeah. and, and, you know, express to us. So it's, mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I know it, well, that's that's a hard one when it comes to like parts of ourselves that we feel are un. Well, I parts of myself, or speak for myself, that I feel are unforgivable. <laughs> you know, like I, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be able to forgive that. I, I can't, yeah. I can't let go of that. But then I, you know, I guess, I guess Bob is okay with it. And... <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. No. <laughs> Look at he, you know, he created you. If he has any problems with you, you know, he's got he's got problems himself. <laughs> I no, like that no. Alan's doing the very loving act right now of washing the dishes. Yeah, I mean, I I found I, I was hard on myself because yeah. you know you grow up and you have these ideals uh even and then it gets shifted over to baba what's the uh, ideal the way to live for baba and i was continually falling short <clears throat> and but i always i always felt i was just very fortunate i always felt that baba was like this most loving mother loving me unconditionally and it basically saying jeff you know, just don't worry about it. It's not that important. You know, it, I mean, I always felt from him, no disapproval at all, but encouragement, you know, but some people, you know, they, they turn God into a judge. And so they, they get judged by him, mm -hmm. you know, and, <clears throat> you know, especially a, a lot of Christianity, you get into God as a judge and, and, and so, <clears throat> Uh, I was lucky, uh, I, you know. I didn't, I didn't, I, I, I wasn't raised in any religion, so I, I didn't have any that kind of God. So basically, yeah. we're working out, we're working out of the sanskaras of our last life, this life, right? Yeah, you mean, you mean uh, working out our, our our Catholic Catholicism from last life? Well, no, no, I mean, I mean. Everything that each of us goes through in this lifetime is uh, it's something I read in the Discord, is right? Where where uh, everything that we're living in this lifetime is, is this is the sanskara that we um, experienced or went through in the last lifetime. I mean, that's some of it, and of course, we're we're creating new sanskaras in this lifetime that we're right. We have, uh, but the more loving we are, <clears throat> the more we're dissolving that whole massive, massive uh, landfill of sanskaras, you know. You're saying there's, there's some part of it, obviously, that is bound to be played out, and then another part of it that we're obviously influencing in this lifetime? Can say that again? There's some there's some part of, of our sanskars that must be played out in this lifetime, right? And then there's and then there's the other half that's like sort of the efforting and also Baba's grace with you know maybe there's there's some things that we can we can actually work out and some things we won't work out. Like <clears throat> why do I wake yeah. up every morning with my head buzzing off my head, you know, out of but my you head? <clears throat> But you, you know, want you want to kind it. of you want to kind of feel like um, that with Baba you could have things dissolving right and left so that you don't you're not left with a huge debt when you go yeah. into the next life. You know, if you can accept yourself 
and accept bhava and it, and it reach a softness in yourself then I, I then you you haven't got a lot of uh, debts and <clears throat> backlog of things that you're or if you <clears throat> I, I feel too if, if you've done some things that are very selfish and you feel them deeply and ask Baba for forgiveness and really mean it, ask Baba for forgiveness, then they don't have to play out in your next life. You're done with them. <clears throat> well, hey, you know, I tried that thing that you're talking about, Jeff, which was to forgive the pe those people that, like, especially that one person in my life that caused me a lot of strife. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know if it's working or not, but <laughs> because... <laughs> I started, I, I keep having like dreams of them and nightmares where they're in my dreams now. And I'm like, I thought I forgave you. Like, <laughs> I just, it's coming up. It's coming up. <laughs> and I don't know if I'm doing it right. <laughs> I don't know. I want to be inviting them into my <laughs> space by thinking about them too much. You know what I mean? But it mm -hmm. seems like, it seems like I'm thinking about them trying to forgive, but maybe I'm, I don't know if I'm doing, I, I feel like I'm asking Baba forgiveness and, and, and thinking, what I'm doing is I'm feeling into it, right? Feeling into yeah. what, what they, what I feel like they did to me. Yeah. And all those years of whatever. Um, and then coming to that place of really, really feeling it. And then, and then kind of flipping it to the point where I, I, I say, Baba, forgive me for, for having made somebody else at some point in some time frame somewhere feel just this exact this exact exact way i've made somebody feel this way please forgive me for that yeah and there's there's there was this big opening and a and a big emotional release but then uh i think i kind of closed up at the end there a little bit <laughs> i didn't let well, it i mean if you know, none of these things are one-time deals, you know. Ah, dang. But you, but you can give up whole chunks of things. Yeah. So you got to keep you got to keep at it basically. Mm -hmm. over but and over it, but if you have that attitude as it comes up and feel it deeply, you can be shedding some of these some of these karmic connections so that what you inherit is a loving connection. Right. Yeah. yeah. Hey guys, I'm gonna head yeah. out. Uh, yeah. I love Good. you all. Jake and thanks, thanks for bringing that all up because yeah, like say, these are the these are the the great challenges that Baba has us working on and <clears throat> yeah, and yeah, I feel like it's it's pivotal stuff, not yeah. just the individual decision, but the you know the 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 awareness of how to work in those kinds of dynamics. Yes. You know, and, not, and not feel bad if you, if you, you know, screw up. Mm. You That's know, a very good don't, point. Don't add, don't add that to the, the mix. I mean, these things are all very challenging. And if you, if you didn't quite um, meet the challenge, there's always tomorrow. There's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and on that note, I love how what you were saying, Alan, before, uh, just before, is that, uh, you know, when working out the karma, like that, that accepting of yourself, I think is so helpful in working out the karma now, because the places that you don't accept yourself kind of block from then getting to, to work on, to work out. You know, yeah. you resist allowing them to come up and, and, and unfold. And, and ultimately, I mean, I know that's that in itself, the things that you're willing to do that for is karmically motivated and tied. So, you know, how, how to really look at that, I'm not sure, but, but, uh, but certainly if you have the ability to be, to, to be open with something, it is, it's important that self-acceptance is, is certainly important. I think mm -hmm. I have, I, I feel, I mean, I, I need to cultivate it more, no doubt, but I really feel that self-acceptance is very important. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think it's it's one of the critical elements, self compassion and self acceptance, <clears throat> because we have these built in kind of uh, perfectionist attitudes that are really quite cruel. <clears throat> you 
you know, it'd be one thing to find what is our next step to take, not the ideal the summit on something. Just what can we, what what are we capable of doing as far as changing? And and but these concepts, well, uh, I should I should always I should never worry. Well, I mean that's you know, boy, you're gonna beat yourself up if you hold if you're if that's something that you, you know, you have to do. Uh, my favorite one is I'll never lose patience with my kids. <laughs> 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 oh man, no. I tried, doesn't work. You know, I try, I keep telling myself I could do it, but it just doesn't work. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, but, much love to all yeah. of you guys. Yeah. Wonderful to be here with you tonight. Yeah, good. Wonderful. I like Jay that. Baba. Yeah. yeah. Jay Baba, guys. Yeah, Jay Baba. Jay Baba, Jay Baba. thank you. Thank Jay you, Jay. Baba, Jay. Baba. Thank you. <clears throat> Marta, are you thank still you. there? Or is Marta there? Yes, I'm here, Jeff. You are there. <laughs> yes, I'm drinking in the wisdom from the youthful ones. Yeah, no, that it, it's. God, it's unbelievable what they're coming in with. Jeez. Yeah, I know. <clears throat> I think I'm just uh, just sitting here and I'm just thinking, Baba, what souls, what incredible souls that are coming in with these guys and with young women. I just, yeah, I'm just sitting here yeah. taking it all in. Thank yeah. you. I know it's just well, Baba. I mean, Eric said that <clears throat> his Mandalay and his close ones would be coming back. They'd yeah. be amongst us, mm -hmm. and um, here they are. <laughs> <laughs> and well, that's helpful, Jeff. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for thanks everyone for sharing their yeah. you know what yeah, you're going through. You. And your, yes, your and Marge is Marge still there? Or is she? Oh. We she went to bed. I guess she went to bed. She dropped off the. Uh... Marge is right here. She's still in the chat. Yeah. Marge, but yeah, we're, Marge. We're, we're speaking to oh. her. She has um. <clears throat> but she might have fallen asleep. She's gone to the beyond. <laughs> yeah, maybe she fell asleep. Fresh day, are you there? Fresh day. Is that Fresh day down there? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Who's who's DKD iPhone? That's Dinku. Oh, okay. That's Dinku. Okay. Yeah. 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 Dinko's great. What what's neat is when I go to India, I'll see all these people. You know. I know. That's it's so fine. nice. You have you have two families. Or well, and a lot of them I've known already. You know, I they start, yeah. start popping up on the thing. It's great. Yeah, it must I mean, be fun for you. Yeah, because I've never spent. You know, when you're at the NPR, you're at the table. I mean, you, you get. To, I mean, I do like to get together with the Indian people, but. There is a kind of a cultural kind of mm -hmm. people moving in <clears throat> into that table. I have to kind of go over and, uh, you know, I don't know what the protocol is, but mm -hmm. I do tend to bar barge in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you like everyone to feel welcomed. That's part of the, your gift, yeah. you know, yeah. being included. Yeah, and and it's it's fascinating. To, it's everybody. <clears throat> is just making their way in, on this journey. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, it's sincere about it. Everything is fresh and it hasn't kind of gotten into a, <clears throat> any dogma and rituals and ceremonies and mm -hmm. still very fresh. <clears throat> you know what I was thinking, Jeff? Well, uh, all of you, we have no idea about how Bob is going to create this new life and if things are going to get worse and worse then us being together whether mm -hmm. it's this format and whether it's supporting each other or praying or however way it mm -hmm. takes form I think this is what what's happening very naturally so who knows mm -hmm. How long we'll be able to do this but 
I think it's wow. uh, it's Baba's work that we're connecting us in this way. Yeah, mm -hmm. Baba said, I mean, the last message that Baba gave on the alphabet board, he said we would be held together by internal links. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Not just our link with him, but with each other. Mm -hmm. Internal mm -hmm. links. And I think these internal links <clears throat> are going to be our support system for the next 700 years. All, all of this, you know, wow. that we're going to help be able to help each other out in, in so many ways. Uh, and, and we're forging, forging. Link. Yes. Forging. That's the right word. Yeah. Something being forged. <laughs> yeah. 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 So if I'm born over in si Siberia and, you know, I'm. Oh, no. You know, oh, no. I don't think I'll visit you in Siberia. <laughs> oh, nope, God. You'll be in your next life and you'll be a scientist and you're going on an expedition to <laughs> Siberia and you'll find a little ragged kid on the side of the road mm -hmm. and you'll adopt him and it'll be you yeah and then i'll be, I'll be back in the baba world oh very good i'll be a scientist oh my god <laughs> really you know what was beautiful is um <clears throat> there was uh there was one woman named louise bauer and she uh, adopted a couple of russian girls <clears throat> you know, from, you know, way in the interior of Russia. <clears throat> and, you know, they're Baba lovers. Nice. One of them was living in India for the last couple of years working in the archives. I mean, oh my how, God. in other words, they, she went all the way, way to the interior of Russia, I think even over in the Asian part of Russia. Oh. And that's how it happens. Destiny. You know? So unbelievable. Yeah. Hmm. You know, and when Alan is an Eskimo next lifetime, you know, we'll be up there on a fishing trip and <laughs> we'll hey, I was just that. I was just researching I was just researching Eskimos. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah, because That's because right. uh, yeah, we're we're just I was, Adrian and I were trying to figure out like how do they make igloos and then and then you know we found out they use whale bones and all anyways yeah apparently <laughs> apparently inuit is the better terminology i just found this out mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah yeah but yes it, jesse's already preparing see yeah yeah we're gonna, <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna we're gonna find you on some floating on some um, ice cap you know or some iceberg you know <laughs> Yeah. No, but um, this, this it's it's beautiful. I mean, how we're going to find each other, you know. Well, it's beautiful how we have found each other in this yeah. life. Yeah. I mean, yes. I mean, look look at you and me, Jeff, and then Param Param. Is that how you say your name, Param? Payam. Payam. You know, I haven't seen her for a long time, and then she pops up here. But she's in L.A., right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then I didn't know that guy was your husband, and he's a nurse. Your yeah. husband? Oh my uh, God, he's so he's so darling. And uh, both of you are in that field. Oh my God, how do you guys ever do it? <gasps> I don't know. You know, I I have to say these uh, zooms, the Archies, we're so we're praying more, and yeah. um, taking Baba's name more. I mean, I yeah. feel with this whole COVID thing. I feel a lot has shifted inside me. I'm much more focused on Baba than I ever was. Absolutely. Yeah. I hear you. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. I, have the, I have the luxury you don't have because you're still working, right? Yes. Yeah, both you and your husband are working. But, so it's not like you're home all day and you can be thinking no. about Baba, you know. No, you're out no. there in the trenches, you yeah. know, getting slugged yeah. and stuff, you know, so. Yeah, it's pretty wonderful. So yeah, who would have? I would have never dreamt Baba could get me up at five thirty to be awake and operating for Archie at six thirty. I mean, wow. only Baba could do that. Yeah. You know, it's like, and now I wake up early and I think, oh no, I don't want to get up. And then I hear, yes, you're going to get up and say the prayers. You know, it's like almost like being in India where I, I used to get yeah. up and feel like, oh, I want to go clean the tomb. 
you know, because yeah. I won't be able to do this for a long time again. I guess. I'm not so mir miracles are happening. Miracles are happening. Yes. Yeah. It's 6.30 and I was in the car and I put on, on my phone and then I called Glenn. Glenn, it's Archie time. Oh. Get on the phone. <laughs> And then I oh. like come in with my bag. Come on, let's finish the art. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. So you're going to work at 6.30? No, 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 not early in the morning when oh, I was nice. coming back. Yeah. Oh, coming back. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah oh, yeah. I was coming back. It was at 6.30 my time. Gotcha, yeah, yeah. You know? Um, anyways, it's good. It's like I'm happy. It's like that, you know? I love it's, it. Yeah. 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 Jeff, are you still there? Or did yeah. you go to bed? <laughs> no, I'm here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I should. Hey, you know, I'll tell you something. Uh, uh, it kind of links up with this. <clears throat> I used to work at Sherry Art Press, and oh. I I would run the press, you know. And oh. you know, you're you got to be very one pointed. You're watching the inking. You're watching what they call the registration, and things mm -hmm. are going through ten thousand. Um, I don't know how. I mean, they're going by so fast. Mm -hmm. And about once a year, I would have a, a vision that would take place in a millisecond and would be a flash. And then I would be back in, you know, one pointed on this, you know, running this thing. And I'd be taking Bob's name at the same time. And, um, but I got this flash where I saw myself something like 300 years before. And I was, I was in a, a room with this master and a few other people and this master said that one day I would come to a place where I would enjoy a reunion with many long lost friends and bam I came out of that Myrtle Beach oh, oh. oh. Uh -huh. years before he was telling me I would oh come my to god to see all these people from scattered from so many lifetimes they're all mm -hmm. coming to um, one place uh, wow and wow. that was predicted by i don't know who the uh, uh the saint was but i mean he definitely knew uh, amazing yeah and then it just came through in that second you were doing that work yeah oh my gosh uh, and i i got the whole thing there mm -hmm. but what i mean is is that it's really true we're 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 seeing all each other. Uh, it, these are kind of rare times when we're all coming to the, some of the same places. Yeah. You know, in the future, we'll be scattered hither and yon. But here we are. We're, we're getting to see all of our long lost friends before the whole thing breaks up. In yeah. Whatever, you know, when there are 40,000 people at, coming to the tomb, I mean, to the tomb or whatever on a daily basis, then you're kind of uh, lost in the, in the soup. So mm -hmm. this is, this is, uh, <clears throat> this is a reunion. What did, what was yeah. that song that what it said hopelessness and helplessness? What is that song? The song, the song in the new life. Yeah. yeah. I, that's what I feel like in, we're heading, I feel like you have to, you have to it's like i feel like i have to accept that song so much of the time because the door of love is closing more and more as baba said that it would until he came back and so it, there's a sense of hopelessness and helplessness but it's there's a there's a little like the way that the song sounds to me whenever I read it, there's a little like Cheshire cat, like little tricky, like, I don't know. It, to me, it's, there's a lightness in there too, which mm -hmm. I can't explain. Even though the words obviously bring up this, you know, hopelessness and helplessness, it sounds so dark and heavy. It's like, there's actually this like, for, like for me, I imagine like I'm walking down this long road and I can just kind of like, well, I don't need to carry this bandana with filled with you know all that stuff I was carrying or this stick with all this stuff it's almost like I you know it's like hopelessness and helplessness like I don't know like the, like the holy fool I imagine almost or something like that I get that imagery yeah. that we're in because it because it is very dark but then there's this this place that when we focus on Baba that that he really does dissolve all of our obsessive worries 
Yeah, he really, yeah. really does. He really, really does. It, it, it's, mm -hmm. it's impossible. It's unfathomable. Unfathomable. But he, he really does do that to, for me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Eric used to say, I mean, as, as difficult and painful physically that the new life was, they, he wow. said they, they felt so free. Uh-oh. Yeah. I got a call coming okay. in. Okay. Okay, Jay Baba. Good night. Jay Baba. Good night.